Oh, hey, Facebook. Hold on, let me put these things on. Yeah. Do we need to wear it? No. No, you don't need no, to wear it. So here's the deal. When I applied to law school, it was kind of a win, Facebook. Well, I wasn't sure. Like start the conversation. Huh? Like if you're watching on Facebook, that was the very beginning of the conversation. You have zero backstory right now. Oh, yeah. We were talking about, about travel and living places. Itchy feet. Itchy feet. I call it restlessness. Mm -hmm. um, and so I lived in, I've lived in Baton Rouge the entire – look, the host of the Go Rouge show, Brian, has lived in Baton Rouge his entire life. But nonetheless, Imagine that. there was a she time – Stay Rouge. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there was a time there was a time where I wanted to leave for a little while and this I picked cities with law school I picked cities in which I want to practice law in the state so San Francisco was California obviously um, University of Denver I was a big fan of Denver and I thought man living in Colorado being a lawyer in Colorado and I it should be noted it was I, good enough for Condi Rice right right, right I went to law school on a whim I got off I wanted to be a teacher I wanted to get a PhD I wanted to get a PhD in literature. Oh, thanks. That sounds really useful. Yeah, right? And so I got offered a Fun. teaching gig uh, at my high school, Catholic High, and I was 21 years old, and I was going to teach sen seniors. And I had what oh, they call in the – God, that didn't play out. Yeah, I, they, I had a moment where I was like, I don't know that I'm emotionally mature enough to teach seniors at 21. And so Very I thought, insightful. I thought, this is not a good path for me. So I worked at Best Buy for two weeks and realized – I also don't want to work at Best Buy. Mm -hmm. And so I took the LSAT and went to law school and went. Okay. That's how that happened. <laughs> Worked Thanks. out great. Hey, Best Buy. <laughs> you know, you know, the sun always shines on Franz Borkart tiny. I hear. That's not true, though. I, from personal experience, I can say Only that's not true. Only if you got your, never mind, never mind. Yeah. Sunscreen? Yeah. SPS so let me, important. so if you're watching on Facebook, we're going to kick this thing off shortly. I'm just loading up, I'm loading up the Talk 107.3 app so that, so that you and I together can be watching the same thing, and we can and we can share. Turn down your volumes, guys. Um, that was me, not you. Um, so you can share what's going on here, and then by sharing, we can care. That's right. Sharing is caring. I'm sitting in studio with Lacey DeSherry, who's taking over the show today, and then Laura Wilkinson um, at Women's, not Women's, Women's Hospital. Uh, I will not do that on air. Good call. Um, and we're going to talk today about leadership. We're going to talk about mental wellness. Uh, you might remember Lacey from such episodes as Dare to Lead. Uh, she is a leadership guru, somebody I seek advice for when it comes to leadership and just life advice. I mean, you're, you're on occasion. We're like outside. We're like yeah. real life friends. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, IRL. So, yeah. is that very, is very that? Hip. Hold on, go Roos. <laughs> Know, they've right? let me do. Stay up on the lingo. They let me do eighty-seven of these things. <laughs> Intergenerational work, Franz. Is that? I'm a lawyer. I don't. I just look at clients and say, "Do what I say and shut up." No, I don't. Do, that doesn't happen. <laughs> I'm sure that works out very well for you. No, what Some happens? People want that. So you know, there's a weird dynamic. I said this to a younger attorney today, and then we're going to start. Um, I used to think that reasonable prices, and then. Discounting reasonable prices would inspire a better attorney-client relationship. But if you charge too little, they think there's something wrong with you. Yeah, there's no value. There's less. Like yeah, there's less perceived value, right? Mm -hmm. So now I charge what I think I'm worth, which is not less than market value. Because as, as Brian Haldane will tell you, I'm, I've got a very heightened sense of self-worth. Um, and it kind of creates a weird dynamic where people, like, really listen to me. And it's like, um, the other thing is I'm real quiet. And I'll say, like, my pieces of advice are, like, one sentence. Like, don't do what you're about to do. Like, if I'm in a board meeting where I'm the attorney in the, on the board, they're, they're talking about doing something, I'll say, Lacey, um, I wouldn't do that if I were you. It's like every time you speak, it's a mic drop. Yeah, and if you don't expand on that, people think, like, the worst. Yeah. So, anyways. Okay, you ready to do this show? Um, or you want just you want to do some commentary, too, Brian? You can. No, no, I'm golden. Oh, good. I mean, I was only in the media twice this week. That's it? No national. Counting me? No national. No national. Counting me? Mm, three times. There you go. I don't... The, our our I know, relationship I know, I know, is I know. not I, media. It's it, more it, two friends talking about law. It is technically media, though. Right. I, I mean... I hear you. I know my numbers aren't great, but jeez. Do we even track those? <laughs> Do what? Do we track those? A little bit. I blame myself since I'm in the segment. Y'all ready? Sure. 
two minutes. I'm ready. Intro, Let's go. And then I'll segue into you. Stand by. Welcome to the Go Rouge Radio Show. This is episode 87. This is your host, Franz Borkart. If you're listening on Facebook Live or on Talk 107.3, welcome. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the circus. This week, we're talking leadership and mental wellness. But before we do all that, before we jump into the episode, I'm letting somebody take over today, Brian. I'm let, you remember Lacey DeSherry? Yes. She's taking over the show today. It, you know, it's it, it makes the bar a little bit lighter for me to, to push off and, okay. and lift. But before we do all that, we need to talk about pink. Oh, yeah. We need to talk about pink. So I'm raising money, guys, for the Real Men Wear Pink uh, Fighting Breast Cancer American Cancer Society campaign. I'm up to $6,000, and it's not even October yet. October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. It's already up to $6,000. I almost did the, the Dr. Evil thing there, 6000 It only works if it's a million or a billion. Billions. Yeah. So what I want to talk about is I have convinced Haspel to do a promo in August to where if you order something on Haspel and use the promotional code – Go pink, G E A U X pink, one word, go pink. You get free shipping, and 10% of every sale gets donated to the Real Men Wear Pink campaign. Now, to be clear, when you go to Haspel.com to do this, you don't have to order something pink. You don't have to you buy something pink. It anything be, you want to order. I'm now, I'm, I think I'm up to now three days a week. I'm, I've, I'm repping Haspel at least three days a week now. So I only own two Haspel suits, but that's about to change. Remedy that. I'm, Remedy I'm that working quickly. on that. Well, and and dude, if I buy if I buy a suit in August, you're helping 10%, yourself out. I, and you know how I like to help myself out, <laughs> like it's like it's going out of style. So if you're thinking about buying some cool suits, uh, seersucker season still very much in effect. And by the way, the rules of seersucker are out the window. Yes, like don't play by the rules. Labor Day is just there a, are no rules. No, 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 no. That's that's all gone because Haspel's no longer just the the traditional Easter Day looking suit. The the seersucker is now made for just going out whenever. Yeah, yeah. So go order real men wear pink. Go to Haspel, order something, put in the code go pink, and ten percent goes to fight breast cancer and inflates my ego by helping me raise the most money. Right now, I got a solid lead. I need to break. 10, you had 000. me and then like lost me like that. I know. Like, it's, that was... it's how it works, right? So, speaking of generosity, let's talk about our show sponsors before we jump into the show. These are the folks that make the Go Rouge show possible. Sullivan Steakhouse, your neighborhood steak restaurant. La Divina Italian Cafe, serving select wines, ice cold beer, plus their exclusive sorbet mimosa. Uh, Dr. G, Dr. Gunja Reyna at MD VIP. She's in Alaska this week. She's in Alaska this week. She's doing the same trip to Alaska I did. Interior for a week uh, or a couple of days, and then she's going on a cruise. But you need to check her out on drreyna.com. Man, oh, man, I'm down 70-plus pounds, Brian. 70-plus pounds. The guy that makes my suits looked at me and says, you've lost weight in your butt. And I got all excited and goes, well, don't get too excited. You've got a lot more to go. Which I guess How much is, more do you have to go? Um, I would like to lose another. So just I'm going to throw this out there. I'm at 217, and okay. my doctor wants to get me down to 285. And I've been at. You mean 185. Uh, 185, excuse me, not up. Wants to get me down to 185, and I've been that skinny before Okay. Uh, when I was a freshman in college. Uh, so uh, we'll see if that plays out. But drreyna.com, doctor, spell it out, drreyna.com, concierge medical services. I love her to death. Um, you definitely need to use her. Last but not least, the Borkart Law Firm, the finest criminal defense firm in the universe, in the multiverse. So those are our show's sponsors. Thank them very much. I'd like to thank myself for sponsoring my own show. Um, I'd like to thank the sponsors. They are the guys that make and gals who make the Go Roo show possible. But look, let's jump in. So my good friend Lacey, who is a leadership expert, leadership guru, um, I told her the other day, I need your help. I said, Lacey, I need you to take over my show for an episode, which you you know, I like to let people with different perspectives, different ideologies, different worldviews take over. Just just take over, which is a lazy way of me doing a show. I'm still here. But they get to make, they get to pick the guests, they get to do the lineup. So Lacey made a made up a great lineup. We're gonna have Lacey on. We're gonna have Laura Wilkinson, 
from Women's Hospital. We're going to have Emma Benoit, right, from myascension.us. And then last but not least, we're going to have some Kendra Scott action going on. We're going to have Katie Moreland on. Guys, if you're watching, you need to pay attention because Kendra Scott is a game changer for guys and gifts. Um, many a time have I had female friends and, and significant others or other um, who I've gotten Kendra Scott's gifts for that have gotten me in, out of pickles and lurches. That's right, getting me out of pickles and lurches. I don't know if they have men's jewelry or not, but they should. Anyways, that's going to be our lineup today. So first and foremost, let's welcome in Lacey. Lacey, how's it going? Welcome back to the Go Roo Show. Thank you. Excited to be here. So, I will add really quick, Kendra Scott, every Mother's Day, birthday, Christmas. You get a little like, discount, right? You cannot go wrong. Just right. walk in the store, get those, something, you can't Those go earrings you have on right now. Uh, yeah, these are not Kendra, but I should have worn those today. I, I thought have, they like, were. Oh, I, I don't know. I have a whole collection. If Kendra Scott is listening, I apologize because I know you have. I thought oh, yeah. those were Kendra Scotts. Okay, but my bad. I'm going to be making some big purchases coming up. Yeah, yeah, so I don't want to spoil yeah, yeah, alert, yeah, yeah. but listen in at the end of the show, and we'll tell you. So, why. so you've got the show today. Talk to me. Give us a little overview of what we're going to be do- doing today. Yeah. So just uh, leadership and mental wellness. So what that means, though, so, uh, how to be courageous in leadership and what courage actually means. So this is an observable, measurable skill set. We've talked about it before. There's actually four specific skill sets for courageous leadership. Um, And now during these times with COVID, with uncertainty, with um, polarization happening more and more and more frequently over the last decade in the U.S., um, it's just it doesn't matter what your beliefs are, where you fall on the spectrum about any kind of idea. You're going to be coming up against people who don't agree with you. And it's, it's challenging to be able to step into those hard conversations. And the number one thing that is killing organizational culture across the board is avoiding those hard conversations, not giving feedback to people who really need it. So it was terribly rude of me not to introduce someone who's standing right next to you, Miss ah, Miss yeah. Laura Wilkinson, who is the Director of Education Services at Women's Hospital. Um, Laura, welcome to the show. Oh, thank you so, so much. So it, it bears ex- explanation that you also work at Women's, right? I do. When you're not, That's right. When you're not nationally trekking to teach people in leadership, such as you got back from Florida just now, right? Uh, back from Florida, was doing a speaking engagement down there. I do international work as well. I've got a gig coming up where I'm donating a Dare to Lead to the International right. Foster Care Organization. No, no big deal. Working with UMass Med School. Yeah, all over the place. Yeah, so yep. you, your day job, so to speak. Day job, full-time day w- job that w- I love. Woman's Hospital. Yes. Um, so you guys, first and foremost, you guys are both at Woman's. And, okay. and talk to me a little bit, Laura, about what you do over at Woman's. Yeah, so I am the Director of Educational Services, um, and that is pretty much all of the professional development as well as the continuing education for everyone within Women's, and then also all of the community education classes like childbirth, new hire orientation is in our department. So we, we educate both the staff of Women's and the community. So... I have done a little bit of, of work with women's. Uh, we were talking about bus breast cancer before we, mm-hmm. we started. Um, there was another event I was working. If I'm not mistaken, um, I was at Anna's Grace Foundation that does something with, with women's hospital as well. Um, this li- Brian, you were you were at the Anna's Grace Foundation. Yeah, it was a good time. Yeah, it was awesome. I mean, not just because I was co-MC. I mean, it wasn't a good time just because of that. It was a good time because that particular charity raises money to help women who've lost children, miscarriages, yes. all that. Not because I was the yes. Go, it looked like it looked like a lot of money got raised. It looked like a lot of folks had a lot of fun as yeah, well. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, anyways, back to back to what's going on. Okay. So, I will tell you, Lacey, and Lacey knows. In my day job, I have tough conversations all the time. Yeah. I'm telling people in my day job, "Hey, you're you're going to have to go to jail for a while," and it doesn't phase me. I, mm-hmm. I it, it is when I have the personal conversations, mm-hmm. and, and Lacey, without ratting me out, will tell you she and I have had conversations before about, "Hey, you need to have this talk with somebody," and I'm like. I don't want to have that talk with somebody. It's a tough call. Talk, uh-huh. talk. And she's like, oh, you don't want to have a tough conversation. So talk to me a little bit about having the tough conversation as it relates to what you guys do. Yeah. So I think some of the thing that keeps us from one of the biggest things, I think, that keeps us from having the hard conversation or giving that feedback that we know is going to actually help improve somebody's performance in the end or help change a culture in the end is that fear or that, you know, those emotions that come up within us. Right. It's not about even about what the other person, you know, sometimes we are afraid of what they'll think or that it'll change the relationship dynamic. But oftentimes it's really that emotional literacy within within ourselves. 
Like we've got to be able to name and manage that emotion. It's that fear. It's that defensiveness. It's that armor. It's that just even regulating our own emotion to be able to step into the conversation and give that that feedback. So it's that shaking arms. It's that gut in so your stomach. Why is it? I gotta ask. Yeah. Why is it? I. So I know that it happens mm -hmm. personally. I know that that anxiety and stressful situation causes it. But why is it that we're so reluctant? to have those conversations? Why do we have the reluctance of having the tough conversations um, when the fear of having the conversation is always worse than the actual yeah. conversation itself? Oh, for sure. Um, so what Brene Brown talks about in this work, and I think it's been focused on in other places too, in emotional intelligence, is the number one thing that the most transformational leaders have in common is emotional literacy. Mm -hmm. What that means is the ability to name and recognize and manage the emotion within ourselves and then name it and recognize it and connect with it in others, which is empathy. And so I think that we are lacking a lot of empathy skill sets um, for not only for ourselves, we're not taking care of our own um, emotional well-being, but we like to shove away the emotions and shove them back because it's it's uncomfortable. It's hard. It's it's easier. We think that if we sidestep the emotion and we if we shove it back, then it's going to be a lot easier and we're going to be able to move forward without having to deal with it. But what happens is that actually that emotion then takes us over and and gets in the driver's seat and drives us without us even knowing it. So the the answer is Brian, repress nothing. That's right. That's how I'm going to live my life. Repress nothing. I can't imagine what you repress right now. I, really, <laughs> really. So, okay, so we're talking the Dare to Lead program, which you've been on the show before. I've mm -hmm. taken the Dare, I've taken the Dare to Lead class. Mm -hmm. I'm, I loved it. Talk to the audience a little bit about the skill set that you learn from taking taking that that class or or employing the Dare to Lead program. There are so many skill sets that you get out of it. So, but we distill it down to four main ones. So, the foundational skill sets are really around emotional literacy um, and empathy. And then um, the four skill sets of courage that we focus on are rumbling vulnerability, because you cannot get to courage without rumbling vulnerability. And most people think, oh, vulnerability, no way, I'm not doing that. Um, but it looks brave in other people, and we all want to be brave, but you cannot be brave without being vulnerable at the same time. Living into values. Uh, that's being able to make those hard decisions, making the unpopular decisions that are aligned with your values, even though it's not what you want to do and you're going to get pushed back. And um, that's really hard, especially when you're making hard decisions about people that you care about. Um, braving trust. So there's seven elements of trust. I'm not going to spend time on that now, but there, um, those are the things that you can do as a leader to make sure that people feel safe and vulnerable, which actually increases productivity and increases the bottom line in your organization and then learning to rise. So when you do step out there, you do make those hard decisions. You do give that feedback that, you know, is going to make um, it better and it's tough. How do you keep getting back up? So for an advanced tutorial on the dare to lead methodology of leadership, mm -hmm. Um, I would recommend either buying the Brene Brown book. Mm -hmm. It's also an audible. You can listen to her narrate it. Or if one wanted to take your class, Lacey, where would one go? We've got two options coming up. Um, LaceyDeSherry.com. You can find out about mm -hmm. that. We've got an online coming up August 18th to 20th. And then I'm also partnering with Meredith Eicher to bring mm -hmm. it back to Baton Rouge, September 30th to October 1st, if you prefer the in-person option. So I've taken a lot of leadership training, and I will mm -hmm. vouch for this program. Um, okay, so Laura, let's talk women's and daring to leave, yeah. showing up. Um, you get Lacey into the into the building. She's she's you've been there for for a while now, huh? I mean, six months. Wow, August nineteenth. Wow. Yeah. So, what's it like employing this leadership methodology at the hospital with your with your staff with your with your folks? Well, what's really interesting is that it had been four years since we had someone within Lacey's role, and I've only been with Women's for the past year, and everyone within the executive team has just really felt that gap. Um, and so when Lacey, we were lucky enough to get Lacey to come on board, uh, she suggested doing Dare to Lead as her kickoff. And so we, we pitched that to our executive and leadership team and 85% of them have, have signed up and we're currently halfway in. We've done three of the six sessions. Um, and I think it's really helping us reset what culture is at Women's and what we see as leadership. because. Dare to Lead really helps you reinvent what leadership can look like. You know, I think everyone grows up thinking, oh, leadership is one thing, and it, it maybe some of the Dare to Lead skills we've, we've said are kind of soft even. Um, but 
it it takes a lot of courage to have these difficult conversations. And something that Lacey said that really resonates within me is when you're giving feedback, having that positive intent of the feedback is really important mm -hmm. too. Because I think we've all been part of an organization where people are giving you feedback to cut you down. Yeah, if I just want to destroy somebody, yeah. I can do that. But that doesn't. There is no positive feedback component of that. Yeah, and yeah. so you know, I have seen Dare to Lead, you know, really help the leaders of women's. Um, be introspective and to start really shifting um, what we want leadership to look like at, at Women's Hospital, which is just so exciting. So changing gears a little bit, we got about seven minutes left in the segment. Why is this so important right now, Lacey? Um, well, I, I want to mention one thing and then I want um, to invite Laura to talk a little bit about it too. Um, there's just so many conditions right now that are so important in our society. Um, there's a lot of uncertainty. Like I said, there's a lot of divisiveness. Um, no matter what you think about what's happening right now, social justice issues, masking, um, politics, like there's just so many issues. And so no matter what side you come down on, um, cancel culture is a real thing. And that gives people permission to not have hard conversations and to just cut people out. And so um, I think we're really doing a disservice to each other by um, not leaning in and having those hard conversations. We're talking about people, we're not talking to them, and that's cutting off relationships. And that's just, it's, we're built for connection. And so that's causing mental health problems um, by isolating people. And so I think that's a huge part of why, but also, um, you know, with social justice issues, with diversity and inclusion work, um, that's gaining a lot of momentum that, you know, is it's really, really important that we're all leaning into that work. Um, but the dare to lead and courageous leadership skills are foundational to all of those things. So I have often told baby attorneys, not babies that are attorneys, but younger attorneys, in when it comes to talking to people in the jury selection context, that if there's a little bit of vulnerability in what you're asking, and you're asking in a genuine and truthful way of just having a conversation, yeah. like Lacey and I once had a conversation, true story, Lacey and I once had a conversation about mansplaining. I asked Lacey, what do you view mansplaining as? Because mm -hmm. as a man, I, I know what mansplaining sounds like, mm -hmm. you know, and we had a we had a very good conversation about it. I I had to 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 acknowledge that I do a little bit of mansplaining. Uh -huh. I, uh, I think I asked if you were mansplaining what mansplaining was to me. Right, 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 <laughs> right, right, right. But but because I believe if you come at it from the approach of I am genuinely trying to educate myself so that I can be informed and not inadvertently, mm -hmm. uh, you know, part of the problem. Yeah. Um, you get away. You get away with the conversation, and I say get away with the conversation. You can have a conversation versus if you're just like, screw you. I don't understand you. I disagree with you, so I hate you. Which is, oh, I got to stay off social media, man. Oh. And it's you know tough. I'm on social media all the time yeah. too. It's just it gets really tough. So okay, we got a couple of minutes left. Lacey, what else do we need to chat about in the first segment before we take a break and talk about mental wellness? Did you want to did you want to talk about the um, how we're using courageous leadership skills in our unconscious bias work? Sure. So um, last year, women's uh, definitely decided to focus on um, diversity, equity, inclusion. And one of the things that we're using is making sure that we are okay oper operationalizing, living our values. Um, and there will be unpopular decisions that are made and that we are, you know, are, are, are being vulnerable and leading that while we're going through our unconscious bias training. Um, and it's something that we just, um, we're all continually continuing to work with this and, and making sure that we're all still growing. And it's been a, it's a great journey that we're still very much on like it yeah. i like it and you know one of the the things i i often tell people is you can be honest with people without being that this whole idea that you have to be brutal and honest at the same right. time like hey brian you got a little something on your nose versus hey brian you look like you're you're disheveled and you don't like like you care for yourself at all and by the way you got a booger on your nose you know, not that Brian well, Holiday has a booger in his nose. You know. And the flip side of that is that honest and kind are not mutually exclusive. Right, but right. But you can also be honest and be kind at the same time. You can yeah. be honest. Yeah. Kind doesn't mean not being honest. Right. But people won't hear you if they don't believe that you're coming from a place of good intent. Right. You right. know, they, right. if you can't empathize with them, they won't right. be able to hear you. We're using words like empathy and vulnerability yeah. on the Go Roo yeah. show, man. 
we all need a little bit more of that. Who does not want uh, to dude, feel seen? And I heard? take every morning. I take two scoops of vulnerability every morning with my vitamins. It's great. It's great. And by the way, we have a little bit of time left. I wrote down in big letters, what is vulnerability? Because that's the number one question guys ask me all the time. What is this vulnerability thing? Can you answer that real quick? Yeah. Vulnerability is risk. So I have something to lose. Uncertainty, not knowing what the outcome is, and emotional exposure. And so the truth is, is that everybody deals with vulnerability. And if you don't think that you're dealing with vulnerability, then vulnerability is dealing with you. So we're approaching our first break Lacey anything else we need to talk about in our 30 seconds we have left um, I think we're gonna talk about mental wellness in the next segment mm -hmm. but it's just a great bridge to think about so why is living mentally well so important um, being authentic leaders being vulnerable leaders um, actually helps us with our mental health but it leads by example for others to be able to do the same thing and we'll talk more about that next so if you're listening you're listening to Laura Wilkinson and Lacey DeSherry over at Women's Hospital we're talking about leadership daring to lead uh, in our second segment we're going to talk about mental wellness we're going to take our first break if you want more information about the Go Rouge show go to www.gorouge.com if you're on Facebook live we're going to stick around and have the show between shows we'll be right back so we're still on Facebook Live. Mm -hmm. Hey, Facebook Live world. Um, Carrie says hello. Um, <laughs> hashtag, fan, hashtag fan club. Uh, so we are going to do something we don't normally do, guys. Um, and I don't know if they're going to be able to hear them on Facebook Live. Probably. Maybe. Um, the phones. Yeah. We'll see. If not, it's just us talking. So Laura and Lacey are sticking around, guys. But we're going to have two call-ins. Um, we're going to have Kate Moreland from Kendra Scott and Emma Benoit from MyAscension.us. Uh, they're going to be on the show virtually or remotely. So just stick around. We're going to take a minute. I lost Kendra Scott. Did you ever have Kendra Scott? That, Katie. that would be Katie, Katie Moreland. Moreland yeah. Katie, can you? Do I need to do anything, or are you going to press all the buttons? Hey, Katie, that was totally my fault. Hang tight. Okay. You don't need to do anything at all. Hit the buttons. Boom, I did it! Hey, Katie. Nope, 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 nope. Hi, how are you? Who's that? Is that Emma or Katie? This is Katie. Emma, are you there too? Yes. Awesome. So we're going to do a two-minute intro, and then we're going to jump into the show. I'll introduce you guys, and then or I'll let Lacey introduce you. Are you going to be able to hear them? You will not be able to hear them. <laughs> There's not another set of headphones? Okay. Do we, hold on. We're going to get some next extra headphones on. I'm sorry, ladies. That's okay. I didn't even think about that. Yeah, I was like, is she going to be able to? It's going to be like a telephone. Like. Wow, Laura. It's like... I'm, like, I'm glad somebody. I'm glad someone with logistical uh, <laughs> training is here. Very good at that. That is not my strength at all. Um, so I'll just do a brief intro, and then it'll be you and the girls. All right. So I've been, I'm on my second round of uh, Green Lights by Matthew uh, nice. McConaughey. You're re reading or re-listening? Both. Okay. Did you, are you in on this one as well? No, not really. Okay. You're just standing there looking pretty? Yeah, okay. just, you know. Well, you can now sit if you want to. Oh, cool. Um, I love just, I hate standing. So, so I am a big audio books fan as well as I'm a reader and if you have not, you need to read Dare to Lead, but you need, you really need to read or listen to, and I encourage you to listen because he narrates it. Matthew, he and I are on first name basis. Matthew narrates the book and it's exactly like, it reads exactly as I would imagine uh -huh. him narrating it and it narrates the same way. So it's like. I've gotten through the first two chapters. Can we, 
And the, are you, what's are you me? You, I feel well, like no, you're me. I just I keep wanting to stop and like write down his quotes and like absorb it, and so then That's I, why I get, get the distracted book. by That's all why I got the other the, things. I got the physical book so that I could go back and do that. And the book yeah. has pictures and stuff. Green light. Green lights. Green lights. Green lights. It's it's deep. It's interesting. It's deep like a well. But I like listening because I love his voice. All right, all right. Yes. I feel like did he do something cringy? I can't remember. Oh. When you Not say cringy. Yeah, something that just makes you feel like he does cringy things, but not cancel worthy cringy things. No, I don't. I don't think it was. I just I, in my. But maybe he's the everybody. Per, he's self deprecating. Oh. So he's, <laughs> so he's self deprecating. Yeah, he self deprecates in the book. He talks about him doing rom com movies and talking about yeah, it's just in the movie they wanted me to take my shirt off and they were paying me, so I took my shirt off. You know, it's that kind of like he not. He talks about the receding hairline. He talks about and, and getting treatment for the receding hair. I love it because he seems like he's being really honest and genuine. So, anyways, we're going to start. I guess we'll start this show now. Vulnerable, like, you might say. Vulner- I was going to say. Yeah. I was waiting for Lacey to say vulnerable. You might mm. say. Oh, I'd love to get Brene Brown and Matthew McConaughey in the same room together. Oh, that would be so. Actually, her and Dax Shepard and... Who's They're the... all Texas too, aren't they? Like she's Texas, McConaughey's Texas. McConaughey's Texas, yeah. I mean, there's a really good destiny. one with her and Dax, and they talk about recovery. Okay. It's a good one. Okay. I like it. Mm-hmm. Is that a TED Talk or a podcast or uh, podcast? Podcast. Okay. Ready when you are, guys. Or Brian. Everybody else, sit. Stand by. We've, we've talked with the folks on the phone. They can hear y'all just fine. Hey, everybody on the phone can hear me. Yeah. Yep. All right. And you can hear Lacey? Hey, hey. Yes. All right, phone, yeah. y'all might disappear for just a second. I have to kill all the mics bringing it back in, so uh, it'll it'll pop back up in just a minute, though. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do with that music that I just heard, Brian. You're listening to the Go Roost Radio Show. That intro music, what is that? Uh, it's uh, called This Girl. This Girl. Okay. This Girl that by seems, Kungs. And- that seems appropriate. We're doing a Women in Motion episode of the Go Roost Radio Show. Uh, if you're listening, Franz Borkart, Master Control, Brian Haldane. Uh, this week, we are doing Leadership and Mental Wellness. Um before we jump into our guests, uh, just a reminder that Lacey DeSherry doing the Dare to Lead program, as well as a, a wonderful part of Woman's Hospital, Woman's Hospital, uh, is taking over the show today. She is in studio. She's standing right next to me. Uh, but before we get to her, we need to thank our show sponsors again. We need to talk about Haspel is what we need to talk about, Brian. We need to talk about the Go Pink. Buy something from Haspel, put in the code Go Pink. Go Pink. Pink and help raise money to fight breast cancer with the American Cancer Society. If you just want to donate, you just want to donate to this competition, this Real Men Wear Pink competition, you can go to the Go Rouge Facebook page, scroll down a little bit, and you can just click donate. And you can give until it hurts. I mean, until it hurts. Lacey's a donor. Lacey donated. I did. So, speaking of money, the Go Rouge show is sponsored by the following folks. These are the people that make the show possible Dr. G, Dr. Gunja Reyna, with MD VIP at Heal360. She's a concierge medical doctor. So when bad stuff happens to me, I text my doctor and she responds. And she says, like, when I fell and landed on my rib cage, she goes, suck it up. There's nothing I can do for you. No, that's not what she said. She actually gave me medical advice. Um, but I don't know if you knew this or not. I mean, you're an, an MMA I'm, fighter. I'm a yeah. Well, yeah, you are a concierge. Dr. Reyna's my doctor, Yeah, you, you're the concierge medical program as well. I am. If you fall on your ribs and uh-huh. you either bruise them or break them, there's really nothing they can do. Nope. And you're not supposed to wrap them. No, you just so, suck it up. You just suck it up. Yeah. Yeah, deal with it. So you want to check her out at Dr. Raina, doctor spelled out, D-O-C-T-O-R, Raina, Rain with an A, dot com. Dr. Raina dot com. Awesome. She is in large part responsible for my physical transformation. I won't give her credit, credit for the mental and spiritual transformation that's going on, but I would definitely give her large credit for the uh, physical transformation. Uh, La Divina Italian Cafe uh, open every day for your custom made from scratch breakfasts, which is not necessarily in line with the health movement that I'm living on, but it's so good. It's so good. La Divina is one of my 
favorite breakfast spots in Baton Rouge. You definitely want to go check them out. They also have really good hot teas, Lacey. I love getting me a good hot tea from La Divina. Great coffee as well. The Borkart Law Firm, the finest criminal defense firm in the pantheon of criminal defense firms that is Louisiana. Uh, we do federal, state, municipal uh, criminal defense work. We also occasionally we represent victims of crimes as well. Um, I get a lot of cases referred from STAR. Sexual trauma awareness and response as well. I was a real men wear pink. Uh, excuse me. I was a hunk in heels with Star, and ever since then, I've had a special place in their heart, my heart for them. So yeah, check us out at theborkartlawfirm.com, Sullivan Steakhouse, your neighborhood steak restaurant. Those are our sponsors. But look, look, don't be afraid to give, Brian, with this real men wear pink campaign. Give until it hurts, Brian. Give until it hurts. Okay. I'm just, I mean. It's only six, I'm only six thousand in. I need to get I need to get to ten. You're only six thousand in to fight cancer. Right, we're fighting cancer here. It's a. Did you know that breast cancer affects men and women? Yes. A lot of people don't know that. Yes. Did you know I served six years on the board for Susan G. Komen here in Baton Rouge? Oh, look at you. Yeah. Yeah. We cancer sucks, man. I just it does. I, the, people ask me all the time, do I know somebody that has cancer? Or, and I'm like, no, nah, I just I really think cancer sucks. So. Think it, speaking of things that don't suck, we have Lacey DeSherry in the studio. Uh, Lacey is going to be ushering in this segment on mental wellness. Lacey, we're going to be having on Emma Benoit from MyAscension.us. Um, it is My Ascension, right? I just my say Ascension. I can just say My Ascension. I, yes. I keep doing the the web address. I'm sorry. And then Katie Moreland, Kendra Scott, Louisiana, marketing and philanthropy manager. You you know the higher ups in Kendra Scott. I mean, we, we've been connected. We're doing a big thing. I don't oh, want to steal I'm, her thunder. I'm taking notes here. I'm taking notes. So talk to me a little bit about what we're going to be doing in this segment. Yeah, so I want to talk. I want to connect the leadership and mental health thing, but then really um, Emma and Katie are going to take it away um, because mental health is health. So I want to start with that. So a lot of people think, oh, mental health is, you know, something that people just have to deal with on the side or like not everybody has, but mental health is health. And right. if you're neglecting your mental health, you're neglecting a huge part of your health. I, I tell people all the time, there is three components to me being a healthy human being. Mm -hmm. Mental health, mm -hmm. physical health, mm -hmm. which physical health doesn't mean I'm working out at the gym. Physical health just means I'm conscious about what I'm putting in my body. I try to move around a little bit. Mm -hmm. And emotional health. Yeah. I separate those three. Yeah. And so I'm glad we're talking about mental health yeah. or mental wellness. Because um, there is a stigma to that, right? People, Absolutely. We, we, we talk about mental health and everybody gets a little uncomfortable. I, I lean into my mental health issues, yeah, my mental I wellness. Mean, well, because it is absolutely as detrimental. So if you have diabetes or if you have heart conditions or if you have other health issues that you don't tend to, those are detrimental and deadly. Mm -hmm. Mental health is the exact same way. I'm on the board of Mental Health America, which is a national organization. It's one of the, nas the largest mental health organizations in the country. And we have a before stage four campaign uh, because it is the exact same thing. Prevention is absolutely necessary to maintain your mental health, to maintain your mental wellness. And let me talk to the leaders out there. If you are not paying attention to the mental health in your organization, you are missing a huge piece of what it takes to keep your employees happy and well and productive. So I'm gonna I'm gonna back burner this question I have, which mm -hmm. is, and, and I know we only have 20 minutes, but how do how do we address mental health? as a leader in a work environment. So many things. Right. So many things. Right. Number one though, tend to it for yourself. Right. If we're not showing up mentally well and we're not tending to that for ourselves, we're not giving other people the permission to do so and we're not showing up as our best selves for those people around us. So I have a phrase I use mm -hmm. and I've used it with my five-year-old. You know I've used this phrase before. I need a minute. Mm -hmm. And when I say I need a minute, Brian, I don't really need a minute. I probably need more like 30 minutes to an hour or longer. If I if you ever hear me say I need the I need a minute. I tell it to clients. I'm mm -hmm. like, "Hey, I'm I'm hearing what you're saying. I need a minute." That's my way of saying I need to take a step back. Yeah. Proceed with caution. The road is icy. I don't want to drive off the cliff. So, I just I I, I just pause. And my pause is I need a minute. There's mm -hmm. other ways you can do that. Um so, okay. So, I want to talk about what happens when we don't tend to mental health? Go for and it. It is, this is a heavy topic. Mm -hmm. um, it's something that I've experienced personally in my own life. And also I'm a, a survivor of suicide with a loved one. My brother died by suicide a year and a half ago. It was a shock. Um, he was 23. And, um, you know, it is, it is something that a lot of us deal with. For every person that dies by suicide, 55 are immediately affected. 
Um, I want to throw some stats out here. The highest population susceptible to suicide is middle-aged white men. Oh, joy. The highest... You're uh, screwed, Brian. The highest industries that experience the highest rates are law, medical, construction. I mean, these are these are real issues, and the more people don't talk about it, Your eyes the are higher looking, risk you are. You're, Lacey's I'm, eyes right now are looking at me with no, this. No, you're, you're, you're putting into practice things, though, yeah. to take care of your mental health, so you're not going down this I, road. I got to tell you, I got to tell you, we're not going to... We're not going to dive, deep dive into this, but I will tell you, I, despite the chaos that I'm surrounded with, mm-hmm. I could not be happier in mm-hmm. my life right now because I'm, I am leaning into my mental wellness. Yes, because if we pay attention to it, we can be okay even if things are not okay. Right, right. Yes. So the last thing I want to say, and then I want to get Emma in here because her story is just incredible. If we share stories of positivity and overcoming these hard things, we can actually increase help-seeking behaviors for others, right? So more than 50% of youth in the last year have had thoughts of suicide. More than 50% in the last year. Wow. Is that is that up or is that? It is up. It has been increasing even before COVID, but okay. COVID has increased mm. it exponentially as well. So um, I want to bring in Emma because... Sure. She has been a part of um, this journey. She has an experience. I'm gonna I'm gonna have her share. But um, my ascension is a documentary that um, is from uh, this area. It focuses on this issue and um, something I've been a part of since before so, it started. And so I want to I want to bring her in to talk so about her story. Emma, welcome to the Go Roos Show. How are you doing? I'm doing well. It's been so lovely um, kind of listening in and getting to hear y'all's conversation. It's been great. So. So Emma Benoit, you're with My Ascension. Tell us a little bit about what that is. So My Ascension is actually a documentary film that encompasses my story, um, along with the stories of um, a couple other families and you know young kids in my parish. Um, so a little bit about my story. So it's perfectly on topic. They are talking about mental wellness and mental health and um, vulnerability being the biggest thing because when I was 16 years old, I uh, made an attempt uh, to take my life, and so I attempted suicide when I was 16. And um, growing up before that a suicide attempt, I had really never talked about mental health. Honestly, I had never even really heard two words, mental and health, used together. Um, so it was never, um, well, it was never talked about. Anxiety, depression, any kind of mental um, unwellness was not. Um, like talked about or brought to light um, for me growing up. So whenever I started to experience my own mental health struggles and, you know, my own anxiety and things like that, I felt extremely alone and I was in the dark because it had never been um, presented to me. It had never been something that people, you know, put out on a platform, you know, to show their vulnerabilities. Um, So for me, it was a complete shock. Um, to have to go through all that and not understand it and not feel like you are, um, you just feel like you're completely alone in those feelings. Um, and so when I was 16 years old, as I said, I attempted suicide and that I had no, I really didn't have an idea as to how big of an issue it really was until, you know, I overcame that and, you know, coming out on the other side, you know, Thankfully, you know, surviving that, you know, it was a series of miracles, but um, surviving that really showed me everything I needed to see um, with mental health as a whole and suicide in particular. Um, So it really, you know, propelled me on this mission and this journey to, you know, share my story and be, you know, nothing but vulnerable for others. Um, And that is kind of how the documentary film came to fruition was just me you know, choosing to be vulnerable and share my story with the world. Um, so that's kind of where we are now with it. And um, I'm still to this day, you know, that's why I love listening in on conversations like this, because I still to this day, you know, learn and pick up so much valuable, you know, things that I can carry with me in my day to day, whenever the topic of mental health is on the table. So, so I, you know, I'm a huge advocate for it now. And I'm just hoping to continue to grow in my advocacy and, you know, learn and educate and, you know, just be what I was missing, you know, as a kid and as a young girl, you know, be that person that, you know, is the epitome of, you know, authentic and just vulnerable. Um, so Emma, let me, let me ask you real quick. If I yeah. wanted to get more about your story or if I wanted to watch the film, 
Walk me how I could do that. Walk me through how I could do that. Yeah, so right, we actually just um, this year just kind of finalized and finished the film. So we, on our website, the best way to do anything with the film is through the website, which is just www.myextension.us. Um, and we have several options on the website of how you can access the film. We are encouraging um, uh, community screening. So we've been doing community screening licenses all across the country, um, virtual and in person. Um, so that's the, the biggest way that we are trying to promote and push this film is through the community screening licenses. That way we are able to go and open up for a conversation afterwards. Awesome. And in fact, you guys have a fundraising um, event coming up on August 17th, which is, um, which is a nonprofit day, uh, with Kendra Scott, correct? Yes. All right. Talk yes. to me. And I know, and I know Kendra Scott's going to talk a little bit, well, not Kendra Scott, but, <laughs> but in fact, our, our, our remaining guest, Katie's going to talk a little bit about it. Um, but walk me through before we, we turn it over to Katie, walk me through that partnership. How did you get connected to Kendra Scott? Um, so it's all kind of happened really quickly. Um, Lacey, just reached out to me and um, just basically, you know, approached me with the idea. I had heard of Kendra Scott's, um, you know, events where they, you know, fundraise and things like that before. Um, so whenever I was approached with it, I was on board completely. Awesome. So, Katie, are you still there? Yes, I'm here. All right, Katie, talk to me. Most of us know what Kendra Scott is. Uh, <laughs> even Even the one guy on the show, well, Brian's a guy too, you know, most of us know who, who, what Kendra Scott is. We, we love your jewelry. Talk to me about partnering up um, with Emma on this project. Yeah, of course. And I absolutely loved hearing all the Kendra Scott love earlier in the show. Happy to hear that people are already familiar with our brand. Um, and I did just want to share a little bit of background about Kendra Scott for those listening that aren't familiar. But Kendra Scott is a fashion jewelry and lifestyle brand that was started back in 2002 in Austin, Texas. And, Fran, to answer your question, we do have men's jewelry that we just recently launched. And we'll, it's we'll actually talk. called, yes, <laughs> it's called Scott Brothers. <laughs> so, Lacey will confirm, Katie, Lacey will confirm that I am extra and I like to accessorize. Um, and so, if you've got it, I'll wear it. Great. Well, I hope you get to take a look at it on the 17th. Um, but additionally, something that not everyone knows is that Kendra really started her company with the foundation of always giving back to her local communities. And we're able to make this impact through our Kendra Gives Back program, which invites local charities and individuals to host in-store and online shopping events where 20% of those sales benefit a cause near and dear to them. And through this program, we've hosted thousands of Give Back events and donated more than $40 million to various causes to date. And our local Kendra Scott Perkins Row location has been open for seven years. And in 2021 alone, we've raised Seventeen thousand dollars so far for our local Baton Rouge community. So, so I, that kind of is a little background. <laughs> so I want to say thank you for all of that. But additionally, where I have seen your presence is uh, especially before the pandemic. If you went to a charity event mm-hmm. in Baton Rouge and there was some kind of raffle, some kind of, of giveaway, some kind of way of raising money that involved uh, uh, gifts, Kendra Scott was there. And I, I want to, to be one of the many people, I'm sure, that says thank you for everything you guys have done. It's different charities, but it's always been Kendra Scott's there. Um, okay, so so National Nonprofit Day, you're, you guys are going to be partnering up um, and video Veracity um, to support My Ascension, correct? Absolutely. So this is going to be our second annual National Nonprofit Day. We started this last year during the pandemic. And we're still able to fundraise $24,000, and that was nationally through our 114-store location. So this year, which we're really excited to announce, is that we're adding a national contest to make this year even more rewarding for those deserving partners that we're working with this year. So the charity that fundraises the most will receive a match donation from Kendra Scott of up to $5,000. That's awesome. So this year, yeah, we're excited. This year, Baton Rouge, our partnership. For National Nonprofit Day is with Video Veracity, highlighting my ascension, as you guys have heard. And this is a documentary with Emma Benoit's personal journey and suicide prevention. So we're really hoping to rally that as much as we can to help Video Veracity win the match grant to help share this inspiring story. Awesome. And if anyone wants to support, our event is going to be on August 17th from 
5 to 7 p.m. at our Perkins Row location, and we'll have our special guest, Emma Benoit, from the documentary there. And if you can't make the in-store event, you can also shop online. We have set up an online web code, which is going to be giveback dash. A I B L D, and that's going to be in all capital letters. Give back dash A I B as in boy L, and then B as in dog. And this code will be live all day, August seventeenth and eighteenth. Awesome! I'll I'll definitely share that. That's give back dash capital A I B L D. Um, you can help support Emma and the and the My Ascension documentary or movie or film. Um, okay, so why is Kendra Scott focused on mental health? Mental health has been something that we have a company has have been looking really closely on. We just want to kind of change that stigma as well. So as we're on topic of supporting mental health, we have launched this year a sun and moon charm that gives back 50% of sales to mental health causes. Um, so we're really looking forward to that and we're being able to like support, support that cause on a local level. So, so you, need to, get this, just, you yeah. need to get that charm on August 17th, or if you're doing online shopping, 17th or 18th. So there's there's a dual give back right there, right? I mean, you get the 50% goes towards mm-hmm. the mental health component, and then you're also supporting Emma, possibly get get enough yeah. collateral to get the $5,000. I love this. I yeah. love this multi-tiered <laughs> fundraising. But y'all, it's a contest, so we need Baton Rouge to show up to beat out all the other cities and show them that we are Baton Rouge proud, right? Right, Yeah. right. Exactly. Well, and look, especially with what's going on, you don't even have to go to, I mean, I like going to Kendra Scott. Mm-hmm. I like touching and seeing things, but you don't even have to show up. You can do online. Mm-hmm. And by the way, online shopping at Kendra Scott, I've bought women jewelry before from Kendra Scott. Couldn't be easier. Because it all fits. Couldn't be easier. You don't Couldn't have to try easier. it on. Don't <laughs> have to try it on. Just, it looks pretty. Click the button. Set up an account. She's looking Happy to see if I have that. a, she's looking to see if I have an account right now. <laughs> <laughs> and, it's almost as easy as Amazon, not quite, but it's pretty easy. It's pretty easy. So we've got a couple of minutes yeah. left. Anything else we need to touch on from Kendra Scott about what you guys are up to? Um, I would say this is our biggest initiative for the month. So just spreading the word about this um, in this contest, I think it's huge that we can actually come out with a total of $10,000 to really um, bring video veracity to show this really important video and story of Emma's um, to more people around. Um, I would say that's our biggest focus. Um, And then as we go throughout the year, September, we'll be focusing on childhood cancer awareness. And then in October, our breast cancer awareness. So we might have to chat later about. We we need to talk. Yeah, we can support. Yeah. Hashtag real men wear pink. So I want to thank you guys. I want to thank you guys in particular. You know, I tell people all the time, cancer is an important charity. I, I, clearly raise money for for cancer but i also say it's very easy to raise money for cancer it's more problematic and difficult to raise money for causes like mental wellness um because there is that stigma to it um um so i appreciate it emma thank you so much for for sharing your story a little bit of your story with us i'll look forward to hearing more about it Uh, again if i want to get more information about my ascension where do i go um, you just go straight, straight to the website. So it's just www.myascension.us. All right. Thank you guys so much. Thank you so Lacey, much for having me. No problem. Lacey, anything else we need to touch on before I, I close this out? Are we just good? Take care of yourself. Take care of each other. Oh, Brian, take care of yourself. I'm going to take care of myself. And each other. And each other. Yeah, you, you did include <laughs> And the each other. other. Serve Bronze. others. Serve Do others. Serve others. where you can. Yes. So, you've been listening to the Go Roos Show. Thank you, Lacey, for taking over the show and helping me out, get some great guests on. You're always welcome back. And then, look, we got to get Katie. We've got to get Katie to work on the good, Real Men Wear Pink campaign, oh, Brian. We'll, yeah. Because we'll I, it. oh my God, Haspel Suits, Kendra Scott, could my ego get any bigger? Oh my God. Oh, yes. my God. It yes. could get bigger. It could. That's why you don't have friends feed, like us. <laughs> don't feed it. Don't feed Franz's ego after midnight. <laughs> don't get it wet. It's like a gremlin. Anyway, <laughs> so if you want more information, go to www.gorouge.com. You can watch all our past episodes. This episode, uh, you can listen on Saturdays at Talk 107.3 at noon, or you can go to on demand at gorouge.com. This is Franz Borkart wishing you a happy week and a happy weekend, and we'll be back next weekend.
more paperwork, no more stress. Get the right tool for your child. Plus, don't wait too long to apply. 